Yeah. We're on. Oh, it's recording. I don't like it. Okay. So this is about multiplying radicals, and then we're going to divide radicals, too. So I'm just going to make up some problems first. So I'm just going to write it up here. So the first rule um, about multiplying radicals is as long as you have uh, a number under both of the radicals, you can actually multiply the numbers together, and this would give you the square root of 6. So as long as you have two numbers under radical, you're allowed to multiply them. Now, the only thing is I'd want to see if I could break them down, perhaps. If the number under the radical can be divided by a perfect square, you've got to break them down. Can 6 be divided by any of these besides the 1? No. Then that's the answer. So if the number under the radical can't be broken down, you just leave them alone. Okay, let's try another one. If I gave you the square root of um, 5 times the square root of 2, what would you say that was? 10. The square root of 10. And then let's check. Can 10 be divided by any of these perfect squares? No then that would be it. That's as far as I can go. So as long as both numbers are under a radical, then you can actually multiply the two numbers together. Okay, let's say I gave you square root of 6 times the square root of 8. What would you tell me that was? 48, like that. Square root of 48, very nice. And then let's check. Can 48 be divided by any of these? Which one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 4, yes, but... 16, and we want to do the, the biggest one if we can. So 16 goes in there, and how many times does 16 go in there? Three times. Okay, 16 is a perfect square, so that's the one I'm going to break down. And what's the square root of 16? Four. And then you can't take the square root of three, so that one recopies. And there's your answer in simplest radical form. Okay, so basically I'm just trying to tell you that if you have numbers under both radicals, you're allowed to multiply them together, and then you just have to check to see if you can break it down like we were doing yesterday. So if I gave you 6 times square root of 8, <coughs> what would you tell me that was? Yeah, 6 times the square root of 8. You actually can't do it. If they're not both under a radical, you can't multiply them together, so you would just basically recopy. It would just still be just 6 square root of 8, or 6 times the square root of 8. So they both have to be under a radical in order to multiply them. Okay? So let's look at this next one that's actually um, here on the page. These are both under radicals, so I can multiply them. So what's 5 times 35? One seventy five. Okay, so it's the square root of one seventy five. Okay, let's see if I can break them down. Can one seventy five be divided by any of these perfect squares? Yep. Twenty five. Okay. So how many times does twenty five go into one seventy five? Mm-hmm. And then twenty five is my perfect square, so that's the one I can break down. And what's the square root of twenty five? Yes. Five square root of seven. So it's a little bit of new with a lot of bit of um, what we were doing yesterday. Matthew, you paying attention? You're not. Okay, in this next section, I have numbers um, outside and inside. So first I do the outside. What's 2 times 3? Six. 6. And then I'm going to multiply the square roots. What's square root of 8 times square root of 7? Square root of 56. Okay, the only thing you ever try to break down is something that's under a radical. So the 6 isn't under a radical. Ignore him. So let's pay attention to that 56. Can 56 be divided by any of these perfect squares? Uh -huh. Four, not nine. Nine times six is fifty-four. Four. Four. Four goes in there. You don't want to use eight, Will, unless you're doing the tree. If you're doing this perfect square method, you have to use a perfect square. Now, if you're doing the tree, you could use eight and seven. So, which one? I've, I've heard it from people. It's four. How many times does four go in there? Fourteen times. And then 4 is the perfect square, so that's the one I can clean up. What's the square root of 4? 2. You can't take the square root of 14, so that recopies. The only thing is, this little 6 I had out, I'm going to drop him, and I'm going to multiply him with that 2. And what do you think the final answer would be? 12 square root of 14, because you're multiplying. <coughs> okay, the next one is the same. So I've got numbers on the outside and then numbers under the radical. So let's do outside first. What's 2 times 4? Eight. 8. Now let's do the square roots. What's square root of 5 times square root of 20? A square root of 100. So once again, you only try to break down stuff that's under a radical. So ignore the 8. And that 100, he's special. What is he? 
tin. He's a perfect square. And if it's a perfect square, it comes out nice and neat. It's just a pretty little tin. Not a square root of tin, just a tin. And then Mr. 8, drop him, multiply, and the final answer, 80. Okay, so that's a little bit about multiplying radicals. So as long as both numbers are under a radical, you're allowed to multiply them, and then you want to break them down like we were doing yesterday. Okay, this next section um, is talking about taking something and squaring it. So 2 squared means 2 times 2. 3 squared means 3 times 3. 10 squared means 10 times 10. So what do you think square root of 5 squared means? Yeah, square root of 5 times square root of 5. Well, what do you think that is? Square root of 25. We just learned that if you have two numbers under a radical, you can actually multiply them and get a square root of whatever it is. And then what's the square root of 25? Five. 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 <laughs> so just a five. Okay, so square root of 7 squared is square root of 7 times square root of 7, which would be square root of 49. Square root of 49. And what's the square root of 49? Seven. Just a 7. You noticing anything? Yes. Okay, so here's the deal. I would like you to be able to skip this step right here. This step, have him not even exist. As long as you multiply by two of the same thing under the radical, that little five, shoop, out he comes. As long as you multiply by two of the same thing under the radical, that seven, shoop, out he comes. It's like when we were doing the tree, when we had two of the same thing, that little seven, shoop, out he came. So it's kind of the same thing here. Um, these up here, I wasn't able to do that because I wasn't multiplying by two of the same number. So I actually had to multiply the numbers together. But if you multiply by two of the same number, then shoop, out he comes. So like this one, this means square root of 8 times square root of 8, which would just be 8. Well, can't you just say that the, the square cancels the... Yeah, I can. I just didn't want to get into that. Okay. If I was teaching an Algebra 2 class, I probably would get into that eventually. Okay, this one means square root of x times square root of x. What would you tell me that equals? X. Just an x. Okay, so that's something I wanted to make sure everybody got, is that if you multiply by the same something, then shoop, out he comes. Okay, so the next section is dividing. This is um, a little bit harder sometimes. So let's look at the first one. Yeah, before I look at, the, yeah, we'll look at that one. Okay, when you're dividing, as long as they're both under a radical, you're going to try to divide them and see if you can get something nice. When we were multiplying, as long as they were both under a radical, we could multiply them. So I'm going to try to divide them. Can you divide and get something nice here? Eight. Eight. So square root of 56 divided by square root of 7 is going to be the square root of 8. And then either I'm done or i got to break them down. <coughs> can 8 be divided by one of these perfect squares? So we got to break them down. Okay, so 4 goes in there how many times? Twice. And then 4 is my perfect square, so that's the one I'm going to clean up. And what would you say your final answer is? Beautiful. All right, so as long as we're both under radicals and you can divide and get something nice, then do it. I'm going to make up a, a separate problem. So let's say I had square root of um, 10 divided by square root of 5. What would you tell me the answer to that would be? Square root of 2. And then can 2 be divided by any of these perfect squares? No. Then that would be my answer there. So my point with this is, if they're both under radicals and you can divide and get something nice, do it. If you can divide and get something nice, do it. This next one, this square root over the whole thing, means square root of 9 over square root of 25. So if you ever see a square root over a whole fraction like that, it means the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. Now, can I divide these and get something nice, like my last two problems? No, so this one I have to think about differently. But this one's nice because those guys are special. What are those guys? Perfect they're perfect squares, so they're going to come out nice and neat. What's the square root of 9? 3. And what's the square root of 25? Five. And there he is. Now, if I could reduce 3 fifths, I would reduce it, but I can't, so that's it. I'm going to... No, no radical because the square root of 9 is just a pretty little 3 because he's a perfect square. Let me make up another one real quick. If I gave you square root of 121 over square root of 16, what do you think that would be? Uh, 11 over 4. 11 over 4. Okay, so if you can't divide them and get something nice, see if they're perfect squares. And if they're perfect squares, then your numerator and your denominator are going to come out nice and neat. And then if you could reduce, you'd reduce your fraction, but we can't. Okay, so in this first, um, the first two little sections I showed you, or the first two problems, uh, you could divide them and get something nice, divide it and get something nice. Here I couldn't divide them and get something nice, but I noticed they were both perfect squares. 
Okay, let's look at this next one. Are they both under um, radicals? No. Then I'm not allowed to divide at all. I can't divide and get 12. I can't divide and get square root of 12. I'm not allowed to divide at all. But I can break down Mr. 24. What perfect square can go into 24? Four. Four, how many times? Six times. Okay, so four goes in there six times. Then I'm just going to recopy the divide by two. So recopy and divide by two. Okay, working on the numerator, I can clean up the square root of four. What's the square root of four? Two. I'm going to recopy the square root of six, and I'm going to recopy the divide by two. Anything you think I could do there? Yeah, two divided by two. Since these are neither one under a radical, I'm allowed to reduce them. What is two divided by two? One. So basically, shoop, they're gone, and all you're left with is square root of six. <coughs> now, six could be divided by one of these perfect squares. I'd have to keep going. But since he can't, I'm done there. Okay, how are you feeling about the dividing one so far? The worst thing about it that I find every year when I do this with students, and the worst part about me not giving you an assignment is I'm not going to know what confuses you um, tomorrow. So that's kind of a, a hindrance to you guys, even though I know you're excited. Yay, no homework. But a lot of times when I teach this in class, students are like, oh, that's so easy. But then when you go home and the problems are kind of jumbled up, you kind of forget what to do with each problem. So that's the worst part about that. Okay, so let's look at this over here because this leads into something different. See how they're both under a radical? Can I divide them and get something nice? No. no. Okay, a moment ago, I couldn't divide those either and get something nice, but I noticed they were both perfect squares. Are these both perfect squares? No. Okay, so I can't do that either. Now, um, this one, I actually could break down the 24. Can I break down the 6? No. Nope. Can I break down the 7? No. Nope. Okay, so this leads us into our second rule about radicals. I don't know who made up the rules about radicals, but somebody did, and here it is. The first rule about radicals is if you have a number under a radical that can be divided by a perfect square, you got to break them down. The second rule about radicals is you're not allowed to have a radical in a denominator, ever. A radical can be in the numerator all he wants, but a radical is never supposed to be in the denominator. So we have this way of getting rid of him, and it's to multiply by whatever is down here over himself. Now, I want to explain why I can do this for a while. Whether it matters to you or not, I kind of want to explain it. So let me ask you, what's 2 divided by 2? 1. <laughs> what's 3 divided by 3? 1. What's 10 divided by 10? 1. What's 12 divided by 12? 1. What's 15 divided by 15? 1. What's 1,000 divided by 1,000? What's the square root of 7 divided by the square root of 7? 1. 1. It is the square root of 1, but the square root of 1 is just 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. So my point of me taking you through that was anything divided by itself is 1. So I am multiplying by 1 here. So I have nicknamed this my fufu. My fancy form of 1. I am multiplying this problem by 1, but in a weird way. I typically wouldn't write a 1 like this. So I call this my fufu, my fancy form of 1. Now, just so you know, technically, we are doing something called rationalizing the denominator. I just don't find that to be fun. Let's rationalize the denominator. <laughs> no. Let's fufu. And everybody's like, ah, let's fufu. So I nicknamed it the fufu, but I do want you to know that technically it's called rationalizing the denominator. Okay, so let me take you through something else. What's 2 times 1? Two. 2. We get back what we started with. What's 5 times 1? Five. 5. We get back what we started with. What's 10 times 1? Ten. 10. We get back what we started with. So what do you think the square root of 6 over the square root of 7 times 1 is? 42. The square root of 6 over the square root of 7. It's, it's what we started with. Like 2 times 1 is 2. You get back what you started with. 5 times 1 is 5. You get back what you started with. 10 times 1 is 10. You get back what you started with. So if I multiply this by 1, I'm going to get back what I started with. But its appearance is going to look different. The reason I'm explaining this is because I don't want you to think that I can do whatever I want to with a problem. Mathematically, I'm allowed to do this because all I'm doing is multiplying by 1. And multiplying by 1 doesn't change a problem. That's why I can do it. And I just wanted to explain that. Okay, so now... He is going to change forms, though. What is the square root of 6 times the square root of 7? Uh, square, square root of 42. And then what's square root of 7 times square root of 7? Square root of 49, which is just 7. Remember a minute ago how we skipped that step? When you multiply by 2 of the same thing, shoop, out he comes. Okay, now the only thing I want to check for is if I can break down that 42. Since he's under a radical, i got to check him. Can he be divided by any of these perfect squares? What? 42? No. No. 
So then I'm done. And the reason I'm not allowed to divide these and get 6 or square root of 6 is because they're not both under a radical, so that's it. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try square root of 3 over square root of 5. Anybody want to guess what my fufu is, my fancy form of 1? Yeah, whatever is in the denominator over itself. And like I said, it's technically called rationalizing in the denominator. I just like to call it my fufu, my fancy form of 1. Okay, so now let's multiply the numerators. What's square root of 3 times square root of 5? Square root of 15. Don't forget the square root over it. And then how about square root of 5 times square root of 5? Um, square root of 25, which is just 5. So remember, as long as you multiply by two of the same thing, shoop, out he comes. This wasn't two of the same things, so I had to actually multiply them. What, Jada? Now, the only thing I want to check is Mr. 15. Can 15 be divided by any of these perfect squares? Then I can't break him down. And then the reason I can't divide is because they're not both under radicals. It's square root of 15 over 5. Okay, I'm going to make up another one. Let's say this time I have um, 2 over the square root of 6. What do you think my fufu is? Six over square, mm -hmm. square root of 6 over square root of 6. It's whatever's in the denominator over itself. And the only reason I do this is because you're not allowed to have a radical in the denominator. And this makes him go away. Okay, this time, what's 2 times the square root of 6? Good, 2 times the square root of 6. I can't actually multiply them together this time and get 12 because they're not both under a radical. Now, denominator, square root of 6 times square root of 6, just a 6. Two of the same thing, shoop, out he comes. Now, do you think I could do anything else with that? Yeah, that right there, I can reduce that. What does that reduce to be? 1 over 3. So I'm going to reduce that to be 1 over 3. So I've got 1 over 3, and then that square root of 6 that was there, I just recopy them. Now, eventually, I won't write that one. I just wrote it today just because I wanted you to see that the 2 over 6 reduced to 1 third. But that 1 does not have to be there. So that's the fufu problem, so rationalizing the denominator because you're not allowed to have a radical in the denominator. And we're going to be doing that in the next few days with triangle problems. It's going to be so much fun. Okay, so this is as far as I got with all my other classes, so I'm going to stop there. You've got about four minutes of freedom.